Over the past three days, spaceflight hasn't slowed down its high pace and has once again brought us a lot of interesting events. Today, we will introduce the three most interesting ones. We'll start in India, where a probe designed for studying the Sun was launched. The second topic will belong to the Falcon 9 rocket, which carried 13 military satellites into orbit. In the final topic, we will look to Germany, where a static fire of the upper stage of the new European Ariane 6 rocket took place. On September 2nd at 6.20 Universal Time, an Indian PSLV rocket in the XL configuration lifted off from the Satish Dhawan Space Center. Its payload was the Aditya L1 probe, designed for studying the sun. Magnificent lift off of PSLV C57 with the Aditya L1 on board. The probe, weighing approximately one and a half tons, separated from the upper stage around 63 minutes after launch, following an elongated orbit around Earth. The lowest point of its orbit was at an altitude of 235 kilometers, while at the highest point reaching 19,500 kilometers. In the coming days, the probe will accelerate during its passes at the lowest point, thereby elongating its orbit. Yes, this is the same maneuver that the Lunar Chandrayaan-3 mission performed a few weeks ago. The Aditya L1 probe has already successfully executed its first such maneuver. The probe will settle into orbit around the Sun-Earth Lagrange point, L1, located 1.5 million kilometers from our planet in the direction of the Sun. Here, its scientific phase will begin, which could last up to five years. The probe carries a total of seven scientific instruments for solar observation and environmental monitoring. Among the primary instruments is the Valsi coronagraph, which will obscure the solar disk, allowing for the observation of the delicate solar atmosphere known as the corona. Another key instrument is the Suit telescope, sensitive to ultraviolet radiation. Additionally, the probe is equipped with X-ray detectors, a magnetometer, and spectrometers for analyzing the solar wind. In terms of instrument capabilities, this mission represents the most complex Indian space mission to date. Scientists expect that the data collected by the Aditya L1 probe will provide a better understanding of the dynamic processes occurring in the solar corona. These phenomena, in fact, influence space weather, which has an impact on our planet. After two delays in recent days, the Falcon 9 rocket lifted off from Space Launch Complex 4E at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California on September 2nd at 1436 Universal Time. The customer for this SpaceX launch was the U.S. Space Development Agency, or SDA. In this case, it was the second launch dedicated to building the Tranche Zero satellite network. The tasks of this network are twofold. The so-called transport layer of satellites provides data transmission, while the tracking layer is responsible for tracking hypersonic and ballistic missiles. A total of 13 satellites were launched during this mission. Two of them were of the SV type and belonged to the tracking layer. In addition to communication systems with other satellites, they also have a wide-angle multispectral detector for detecting and tracking of ballistic missiles. The remaining 11 satellites belong to the transport layer. These satellites have optical terminals and bi-directional radio equipment. Four of these satellites also have a bi-directional link for tactical data. Although the payload was aiming for an orbit at an altitude of 950 kilometers inclined by 81 degrees to the equator, its mass was relatively low. Therefore, the first stage, used for the 13th time, 
was able to return to land this time. Its landing on the LZ-4 concrete pad, not far from the launch site, marked SpaceX's 222nd successful stage landing. This is the facility in Lampoldshausen, Germany, operated by the German Aerospace Center or DLR. Here, for several months, engineers have been conducting comprehensive tests on the upper stage of the new European Ariane 6 rocket. Engineers have systematically tested all systems, including the Vinci rocket engine and the auxiliary power unit, or APU. On September 1st, it was time for the main test of all systems. The control center verified that all parameters were within the norm and subsequently granted permission for ignition. The Vinci rocket engine burns liquid oxygen and hydrogen. This engine can be stopped and restarted multiple times, allowing it to carry payloads to more complex orbits. Additionally, after payload separation, the upper stage can perform a deorbit burn to avoid contributing to space debris. The ability to perform repeated burns is due in part to the APU. It maintains optimal pressure in the tanks and prevents the formation of bubbles in the fuel and oxidizer. The APU operates using a small quantity of oxygen and hydrogen. Its deployment will make it possible to eliminate commonly used systems that rely on large quantities of helium. The Ariane 6 rocket is set to become the new flagship for European spaceflight. It is a direct successor to the legendary Ariane 5 rocket, but will be more cost-effective to operate. The inaugural launch of Ariane 6 is expected in 2024. Thank you for watching today's video, and don't forget that we also have a profile on the social network X, formerly known as Twitter. You can find the link in the video description. The next episode of our show will be released on Wednesday, September 6th.